guys thanks for watching as always um, today we'll be making a, a custom whopper plopper uh, now as you may or may not know the whopper plopper has been quite the hype in the bass fishing industry here in the US uh, they catch a lot of good fish they're a surface lure they work fantastic um, but we want to change a couple of things simply because we think we can make alterations that might benefit the way that we fish surface lures um, now first of all uh, I think it's the Whopper Plopper 90. Um, the, the hook positioning is not optimal, so that's one thing that we wanted to change. Um, as you can see here, we've located the hooks, hook points aligned with the fattest part of the body essentially to um, optimize hook exposure. Um, and so uh, that's kind of like our basis. We wanted to have like a little bit of a smaller boot tail as well. Um, or spin tail, whatever you might call it, smaller propeller, let's put it that way. Uh, so we can fish it a little bit quicker without uh, as much resistance. We want that body to sit deep in the water, so it still pushes a good weight. And, um, well, we'll go from there. So I've got some uh, cypress wood here. This was some old stuff I came across, and there was just a, a perfect little part where I could still make the lure out of. I had to work around some... All the areas that were a bit rotten didn't look too good, but um, we we found our uh, good piece of wood eventually and went from there. So um, obviously I've start, started carving out the the main shape roughly. Um, I've only done the the bottom and the top because we want to leave some flat sides. Um, why I'll show you in a bit. Um, here you can see me just determine where the um, spin tail of the, or the propeller. Um, is going to be positioned and what size it's going to be. So here you see that we fully carved it all out um, except for the sides. Now the reason for that is we have to make a cut to uh, make the propeller tail and we can't do that in a straight way, in a proper way, uh, without one of the sides being flat uh, for it to sit on. Uh, might sound a bit, sound a bit weird but um, once we carve out the other side, it might make more sense. Might make more sense. Uh, this, uh, these flat sides allow us to put it in a miter box flat, and then we, that way we can make a, a straight cut. This is just a bit of a rough scratching to see roughly where the tail is going to be. Now, as you can see here. This allows us to put it flat on the miter box so we can make a straight cut. Might make a bit more sense now. Now we don't want to cut all the way through quite yet because we still want to carve the tail in a, in a nice uh, fluid form that kind of aligns with the body. So we want to make a cut halfway through the tail so that we can still carve over it um, while it's in line with the body. Now after we've made the cut we can determine the um, thickness of the body and where we want to might want to make some adjustments now I'm do, just doing this simple trick to keep it symmetrical I uh, use a little bit of piece of paper I fold it in half and then uh, once I've determined one side and I fold it in half and I cut, uh, cut it out I'm able to get a nice symmetrical cut and then uh, print that onto the wood It's a bit of an odd shape, but, you know, just want to try new things. That make, might make a bit more sense, what I'm doing and why, so that we have equal sides, essentially, to keep the bait symmetrical. After that, the carving can begin. Um, this probably takes up most of your time, but when it comes out good, it's quite rewarding. Make sure you always have a good sharp knife. I'm using a Stanley knife here. 
don't be afraid to replace the the blades inside um, at the moment where you feel like they're getting blunt they probably are blunt already so um, yeah make sure you change them over quick enough to save yourself some time uh, and potential uh, finger cuts now I'm using a Dremel tool here, here to make uh, uh, the thinner part a bit smoother uh, it was kind of difficult carving it with a knife um, but the Dremel tool helps a lot it's one of the most useful tools that I've got and frankly only the only power tool that I use for um, making my lures when, when the body is fully um, carved out and sanded uh, we can um, continue to cut the tail off completely and as you can see they're not round um, and so we uh, will have to make some adjustments to that that's easy enough though we'll use the, the Dremel grinder tool um, that works easy enough for the main body for the tail we have a little bit of a different approach Now as you see here, it fits reasonably well, but the tail is still not round properly. Um, so we had to kind of come up with an idea to make that tail um, nice, nice and round, real smooth. Obviously the tail will be spinning, and so we can't really have any um, uneven sections in there. As you can see on the intended screw eye that we're uh, intent on putting it on uh, it does spin quite well but we do want to adjust it a little bit so what I've done here is I've actually connected it on a drill bit uh, on the Dremel which allows it to spin really fast and all I then have to do is hold a piece of sandpaper next to it and you get a, a perfectly round sanded tail and that worked incredibly well so might be a little trick if you do intend on making a, a whopper plopper yourself as well, uh, this is one way to do it. As you can see that lines up quite nicely. Now we've put a cup washer on the um, end of the screw eye so that it reduces the friction between the wood and the end of the screw eye. Uh, we want to have uh, as smooth as, as a rotation on the tail as possible so reducing the friction to a, a minimum is uh, important. This spins quite nicely as you can see. So here we are determining exactly where the propeller is going to be. Uh, make sure you have a, a nice straight knife. You want to make a straight cut to determine uh, where the slit's going to be. And I'm just using uh, a Dremel tool to make the actual cut. So here we've made the slit, um, and now the propeller itself is going to be made out of uh, plexiglass. It's what I uh, use for uh, diving libs on, on my hard bodied lures. It's very strong, very durable, but also quite light, so that it doesn't uh, affect the, the weight of the tail too much. It's perfect. One thing that I did forget to tell you was to make sure that the slit that you make is on an angle, so that it's not straight. Um, that allows optimum rotation. Uh, I did 
intend on trying out a couple of different shapes of propellers, uh, but it just so happened that the first one that I actually made worked really, really well, perfect for what um, I wanted, and so uh, there was no reason for me to design anything else. I just stuck with the original and went from there. So the way that we fix the propeller in the slit is um, by super glue, and then we uh, fill the gaps up with uh, sawdust, and then put super glue on top of that, and then another layer of sawdust and super glue again. Um, hardens up really well, holds it really well together. Obviously, we'll be putting this in the epoxy as well, so that will be an extra bit of enforcement. But uh, this is the the main stuff that holds it all together. And since it's uh, the same sawdust from the same wood, it's the same color, so it transitions quite nicely. Do have to clean it up a little bit afterwards because the super glue does go everywhere. Uh, but that's easy enough to do. In case you're wondering what happened to my hands, I forgot my uh, hand reps during boxing practice, so didn't have like a bad accident with a Dremel tool or a saw or anything. <laughs> All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, now it's time for something that you don't necessarily have to do to make a lure. I do it to all my lures because I think it looks nice and it really finishes the lure off, but it doesn't make it any better, it just makes it look better. Um, so we're going to do some face carving. Um, now obviously we want to have the, the eyes symmetrical, we want to have them aligned. So a little trick that I do is um, I get these stick on eyes and I put them on the, the face where I want them to be and then I align the second eye with it. So I look from the top and I look from the side and then uh, once they're perfectly aligned I draw a little circle around them uh, so that I know where to carve and where I have to locate the, the socket for the eye to sit. It's a bit of tedious work again, totally unnecessary, but if you want your, look, uh, your bait to look real good, um, I can highly recommend it. It's quite rewarding once it comes out as you uh, anticipate it. Now the lure is really starting to take shape. This way you kind of get excited. You want that project to be done, ready to fish. Had to, there were some very uh, little cuts that I had to make. So I was just using a little blade instead of uh, a normal blade. It was a little bit more accurate. But those were luckily only a couple of cuts probably wouldn't have had the patience to uh, make the full cuts. That's starting to look good. Make sure that you send all the little cuts that you make if you intend on carving a face as well. I'm sending it out with the 320 grit there. Now obviously we had to do some weighting. Now I've already uh, dipped the, the body in epoxy here reason why is because I wanted to test and um, see how it would sit in the water. I want that body to sit quite deep in the water. Still float, have its back out of the water, but nose and everything um, down in the water. Uh, so I uh, grabbed the, I think this is a half an ounce sinker, uh, drilled a hole in the, in the belly. Um, and now I'm fixing the sinker in there. Same as with the propeller, you put super glue in there, then you put um, sawdust in there. Crazy glue actually works fine. So 
so here you can see I've sanded it uh, I've sanded a couple of points on the body as well the reason is because I want to create a little bit of a, uh, a diamond scale pattern on there only on uh, two stripes on the body and later I'll rub some ink in there so that we'll have a, a nice contrast to the wood for the rest I'll be leaving the whole bait as a, a full wood wooden bait almost kind of looks like a rattlesnake looks really good actually uh, was quite happy with how it turned out again completely unnecessary but very rewarding when it comes out so there you have it that's the uh, second polyurethane coating right over the ink wrap scale pattern looks really really nicely so now all that was uh, left to do was um, put the eyes in there fix it with a bit of super glue man I go through tubes and tubes of that stuff um, and then it was uh, time for the epoxy coating now as always I'm using Envirotex Lite this stuff is uh, fantastic for it um, hardens up really nicely the only downside to it is it's not super cheap and it um, only hardens up really really well if you've exactly measured that uh, uh, one to one ratio if you're off by a drop you're going to notice that in uh, how well it hardens up so here it's out of the epoxy I'm just um, fitting in the screw eye for the tail Then it's ready to be fished. Actually, might have to put some hooks on there as well. <laughs> there you go. So we've located the, the hook hanger is actually between the thick parts but it aligns the, the point of the treble perfectly with the thicker part of the lure so our um, hookup potential is uh, maximized I've put a screw eye as a tail, I could use, you could use a piece of straight wire um, but I use the screw eye for the tail simply because uh, I might have to hang another hook on there or I want to add a trailer now as you can see this lure swims perfectly I've named it the, uh, the plug bug because uh, it looks, uh, well I'm not going to go there, but it's kind of like a jitterbug, it's a surface lure. Does exactly what I wanted it to do, makes a nice plop and sound. I can fish it fairly quickly as I anticipated, without too much drag. And that propeller is kicking really good. I hope you guys enjoyed, if you've got any questions please let me know. Um, also, if you've got any ideas for what I should make next, uh, please leave it down in the comments. And uh, I'll definitely take it into consideration. Cheers.